Okay guys, of all the crazy places I've explored in my life, including a really cool abandoned ghost palace in Bali, Indonesia, exploring an abandoned palace of Saddam Hussein in Babylon, Iraq, has to be one of the weirdest things I've ever done. It is said that Saddam Hussein, who served as the fifth president of Iraq, spent up to US dollar two billion building over 50 palaces around Iraq from 1991 to the early 2000s. One of his most famous palaces was here, overlooking the ancient city of Babylon. When he saw this site and knew that he wanted one of his palaces to be built here, it meant clearing away an entire village of people, including our guide and his family who had lived here for generations. That time Saddam gift money good. <laughs> yes. He, said, he gave you money? Yes. I'm destroying yes. your house, but here's some money. No, some people angry for Saddam because you put it here, grandfather live, yeah. father live here. Yeah, me family. angry that time. You were. Because me, that time, they destroyed this uh, village, me cry here. During the 2003 American invasion of Iraq, many of Saddam's palaces, including the one in Babylon, were taken over by the US military. After the fall of Saddam, many of his palaces were looted and graffitied. And you can see once it was abandoned, people have come in, looted the place, graffitied the place. But you can still see it was quite beautiful. The roof is quite beautiful. There's a lot of carvings and artwork. What it looks like? I thought it was wallpaper, but I think it's just carvings. Saddam Hussein had so many palaces dotted around Iraq that he didn't even have time to visit or stay in most of them. Probably would have been a water feature down there. Well, I feel that pretty much every historical site we've been to, I mean, it's a fact that we have been the only tourists. I half wonder if we're the only foreign tourists in the entire country right now. Uh, which is probably true because it's August, it's a very hot time to visit and obviously the visa arrival thing only happened in March. But it's still so cool to come to a site like this, be like the only person walking around. Let's see if we can get a better view down here. It definitely feels very weird to be in here, but it's also like weirdly peaceful. It's like right on the river, has beautiful views of many palm trees, and obviously the ancient city of Babylon, which was once the largest city in the world. And there's no one else here. So if you see that tree, surrounded with concrete and just like protection, this was Saddam's special tree, palm tree here. And uh, he actually appointed one of the farmers just to take care, take care of that tree, uh, uh, maintenance and like uh, feeding its water and yeah. He that was, was just his. Like, full, that was his whole job, just one tree. Yeah, yeah. He actually visited this place only one time. His task is only to maintain it. Right? Maintain this tree, give it water. After a full hour of exploring the abandoned palace and taking in the spectacular views of Babylon, we headed to the nearby city of Hala for a traditional Iraqi lunch. So this, this unique bread, they are making it Whoa. for themselves and they have the oven here. Wow. It's like twice the size of dog's head. It's also burning my hand. Guys, check out how massive this bread is. This is traditional bread from this region. Babylon! Just been given this little mezze platter for a starter. It looks so good. We're gonna break off some of this traditional bread. It's really beautiful. It looks good on the camera. This is definitely a mini soup. You can really taste the meat. This bread is amazing. Hands off that hummus here. This is mine. Thank you so much. Give it here. Hey, give it. No. <laughs> they obviously saw how much we liked that salad because they brought you a whole plate of that other one. You, you loved that one, and then like, that. yeah. I was never a big fan of olives in America, you know, growing up, but I really love them. Look at this massive plate of olives that they've just given us. These are huge! What the heck? Look at the size of this! Our plate is on fire! 
Happy birthday to me. Wow. Really insane. I don't think I've ever seen a plate this big in my life. This plate literally takes up the whole table. JJ. Let me explain exactly what is on this plate. I'm so excited to eat it. We have lamb skewers chicken skewers this is liver then we have a rice around the corner we we tried that the other day in Baghdad so much lemon salad eggplant this is gonna be incredible obviously there's rice in the middle what's this just a decoration we don't know <laughs> and then we have the salad from earlier the hummus beautiful olives and the fresh amazing bread. an absolute feast and a total feast I can't believe this is so much food you can do it Doug <laughs> I love the way you eat here. Everyone just gets a bit of bread and then you just pick whatever you like off the plate. You don't really get like individual plates, everyone just sort of sits, sits around a big plate. Okay guys, to finish our stay here in Babylon, we are doing one last stop, which is to this ziggurat that you can see behind me. Uh, quite similar to the ziggurat that we saw yesterday outside of Baghdad. Um, and this one is said to be the second holiest in the area after uh, Iftar Temple in Babylon. Yeah, so we're actually just outside of the new city of Babylon. What is the new city? Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. They said 3,000 to 3,500 years old. One of the craziest things about this site is that you're just walking around, it's like dust and rock everywhere. And as you're walking, we just look down at the rocks we're walking on and realize that there's actually like carvings on the rocks that we're walking on, just the bits of what looks like rubble or trash. And it just shows that there's so many sites here that have not been properly excavated yet, or maybe that have not been properly preserved, and that if archaeologists came, came here, they'd probably have a field day. And I'm sure they are coming here in turn. Um, they can only do one thing at a time right now. They are doing a lot of uh, kind of world heritage work and excavation at the ancient site of Babylon. Maybe this one will be next. But yeah, it's so crazy just to walk around and just see all these carvings on the rocks. So after the ancient city of Babylon, this would have been considered the second biggest city or second holiest city in this region of, well, what is present day Iraq. Okay guys, I am going to end today's vlog right there and I really hope you enjoyed our, our adventures here in Babylon and that you will consider visiting this amazing historical place in the future. Really hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, don't forget to subscribe below and think about giving it a thumbs up. And don't forget to tune in for my, for my very next vlog from Iraq, which is gonna be from the ancient and very important religious site of Karbala.